All right, I'm just looking over this uh, piece. I've got uh, a lot of little tiny things I've got to do. I've got to finish off this tail. I had started the tail in Tahoe, but I ran out of time before I had to leave. And uh, then I dropped this clay off at the uh, gallery in, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming for about a month. And so it uh, sat there and I wasn't able to work on it on top of the fact that I was already working on something else here. Uh, I'm going to redo his uh, bow quiver because it's just done as a quick sketch uh, as to what it's going to be. Uh, on this quiver here, I've got these straps blowing in the wind and the, the whole quiver and the shield being blown up against his uh, uh, left arm. And I, I see a lot of vacant areas that need to be filled with clay uh, just to keep it so that uh, it's a little more simple when they cast it. Um, working on that arm and hand that's holding the, uh, the rein there. So there's just a lot of little tiny things I need to do, reworking this hand a little bit uh, and working on the uh, bottom part of his shirt. These war shirts tend to be uh, short in some, in some respects. Um, so I'm going to do that and uh, get started uh, now. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take a piece of wax that I've warmed up under uh, a swing arm lamp. Clean off some of the clay from the last time I used it. This is uh, called Victory Brown Wax. I get it from the foundry that I use because, uh, well, because I use it in their casting process. What I'm doing is I'm doing a teardrop shape to the quiver, the thin part up here, the rounded thick part here, that's where the arrows have settled themselves into. I'm going to take these fondue sticks and use them for the arrows. If you get it just right, you can split it right down the middle and then split it one more time. What I'm going to do is just drive the peg down into the uh, quiver like that. I'm not going to put quills on every feather, I'm just going to do it on a few because uh, there's really no need to do it on all of them. I'm just giving an indication of feathers and arrows and stuff like that. Alright, that's just enough to indicate arrows. Okay, I've split a fondue stick right down the middle and I went about the length that a bow would be and now I'm just going to carve a little bit on the top. I'm using my <coughs> glyptic uh, wire tool to uh, 
thin it out just a little bit more. Okay, now I take the bow and I want to cut off there and there. And I want to wrap the bow in it. That's how the uh, quiver would be attached to the uh, bow. Alright, as I've shown you in the past, I had a, and I'm repeating this only because there's people who always join for the first time, I had paint mixed up that would be the same color as the paint or the clay that I'm using and uh, if you put a piece of dark wax on a clay light colored clay and people uh, look at it like for instance in a gallery if you're showing it or even in photographs that you take of your clay they'll sit there and ask you over and over again what what is that? Why is that different colored? And so to save myself having to answer that question all the time, I paint my clay to look like, I mean my wax to look like clay. And so that's what I'm doing here. Doesn't hurt the sculpture at all. I can still add clay to this if I want to once the uh, paint dries. also see imperfections that I couldn't see because of the darkness of the, uh, the wax. So I'm going to pick this up tomorrow. I'm going to let the studio warm up a little bit more. And I'm going to go clean my brush. Good night everybody. Happy sculpting. I went to the hardware store and came back this morning with uh, this roller. It's a roller that uh, plaster, uh, you know, when people put up uh, plaster board in houses, I, uh, they tape the seams, and this is what they roll the seams with, and it's perfect for rolling wax or clay. Um, so that's just a little item that I suggest you uh, have in your tool kit. Uh, made another bow and quiver, exactly the way I made this one here, so that's why I'm not... Uh, I didn't video it. I made that last night. Now I'm going to uh, finish out the arrows. Uh, this one is going to be going on to the uh, warrior on the ground. Okay, I've got the uh, new scabbard placed on. I'm just uh, doing some detail work on the uh, straps that hold it on in place on his back. The uh, straps that go over his shoulder and I'm blending it into the uh, old strap that's there now because it's an integral part of the uh, shield and so I can't detach that and I'm lining up the uh, straps that are there with the uh, scabbard as well. Now normally I would put fringe on the uh, 
bow scabbards, but I'm going to leave the fringe off of it because I think it might just uh, be too expensive to reproduce and it really doesn't need it to uh, look good. All right, now I'm going to uh, fill in behind the strap. Right in here and down in here, there are some vacant areas that need to be filled or else I can't have this cast as one piece. as well as some area right between the shield and the scabbard there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now before I paint it. The key to filling in is to make it look like it's not filled in. So that uh, does it for the quivers. Uh, tomorrow or next next week, since this is Friday, uh, I will be back on to this piece and uh, try to get this uh, a little further along. Next project uh, will be the shield. Uh, I've got, like I said, a little detail work on feet and hands and arms and wrists and stuff like that but uh that's going to do it for today and i'll see you guys uh, next week it's looking pretty good got a little patching right there to do all right adios happy sculpting